in the left center field. McLaughlin and Cole. It'll be Cole from center to make the play. One down here in the eighth. Another pitch hitter being announced here, and it looks like it will be Robbie Dodds. Dodds, the transfer out of Spartanburg Methodist. Another guy that factors in off the bench here. We were talking about the depth of bats. I forgot about Dodds, the transfer in his first year as an Eagle, and a guy that might see some time at DH, also left field. So Dodds will face Jared Brown, the pitch. Fastball on this inside. One ball, no strikes. Eleven one Southern here in the bottom of the eighth. Pitch. Dodds roped down the first baseline. The foul. One ball, one strike. No announcement on a starter on Wednesday, and that was by design. You don't know how you're going to get into the pitching here on the opening weekend. Stevenson will probably be available after the long relief inning. That is up the middle through the wickets. Ward from second will have to throw in a hurry and he retires Dodds on a really good play from Nelson Ward over at second base. A ball that looked roped up the middle. I don't know if it kicked off the heel of the shoe of Jared Brown or for it either hit the, the mound or hit something and skipped up in the air. Yeah, so Dodds was ro really robbed of a good A-B there as he's retired. If it was off the foot, I guess retired 1-4-3. Yeah, Brown and Nick Ward, the second baseman, laughing about it right now. Brown's pointing down to the right heel on his foot. And it appears that it hit him in the right heel and went over to uh, the second baseman, Ward. So here's Zach Lenz. Lenz takes a call and strike. Lenz took over in right field for Scooter Williams after the cramp in the fourth inning on the double play on Friday night. It was 0 for 1, makes his second appearance in this series. He'll take a ball low, one ball, one strike. Lenz actually got the start against Sanford finale in 2012. Lenz played right field, walked twice, fielder's choice, hit by a pitch in that ball game as that one's fouled out of play, one ball, two strikes. Dwight Pugh, a guy that plays a lot of different positions, would be your third catcher if you needed one. Plays all three outfield positions, could play a little first base. The two outs, on two. Fouled off again. Protecting that out of third, one and two to count. I'll tell you another thing. I've, I've, I have been impressed with the focus. I mean, this is a focus that bat an 11 1 laugher on a Sunday. You see Lynn's battling here, fighting off that outer third, one two. Takes that time and a good take, two and two to count. Yeah, I don't think you've seen one player on the squad that has not been focused this weekend. They knew the task at hand. Want to take business, take care of business against a SEC school, in-state rival in Georgia, and they've done just that. Foul back to the screen. Two balls and two strikes. So two outs, the two-two. Now back again. Lins continues the battle. Two and two the count. Yeah, Lins hanging in there. A couple pitches on the outside half of the plate. Looked off speed, getting Zach out on his front foot, but he's able to flip the bat head out there and spoil a couple good pitches from Jared Brown. The 2 2 offering. Bouncer towards second. Nelson Ward will have another chance at it. He'll overhand to first in time, and the inning is over. So 4-3, along with the flyout in the inning. Southern goes quietly here in the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Top of nine, it's closing time here at Clements. Southern 11, Georgia 1 on the Georgia Southern Radio Network. We pursue knowledge. 